On this episode of the Turnbuckle, Malachi Black's AEW run is being dragged for being a disappointment. Bray Wyatt is going to appear at Crown Jewel, and AEW and FTR are called out for carrying around a bunch of belts that don't mean anything. Folks, it's time to hit the accolade into some wrestling news because it's time for the Turnbuckle. Well, speaking on the Jim Cornette experience, uh, Jim Cornette dragged Malachi Black's AEW run for being a disappointment. This guy's been a disappointment since the start. Remember, he looked good. We th remember he remember he looked good. We thought, okay, guy looks like a badass. He uh, had some buzz about him. Came in, did the thing with Cody, and then all of a sudden, Supernatural City came in. And every match of his, he would have a good match that would go in the toilet because he was playing some kind of spooky mind games with people. Then he gets a group around him, and they cater to him until he realizes he ain't getting over. And then he wants to go back to where he kind of got over a little better. So... I think that Jim Cornette, he, I'm, okay, I'm not going to sit here and be like, no, he's wrong, he's wrong, because it's not necessarily about him being wrong. It's about him sort of misinterpreting the whole, I guess, okay, I don't know the word I'm trying to think of right now. That's, that's not really, I don't, I mean, okay, to be fair, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, who's Alakai? Oh, because I was thinking of Alistair. I'm not really Malachi Black, right? So... For all we know, that could genuinely be the reason. But from his, from Malachi's standpoint, it was just the fact of, like, he needed to... I don't remember the full story, man. It's been, uh, like, a couple months. But he was pretty much like, I need to recuperate and all that sort of stuff. And that's kind of, like, why he left, essentially. Now, it it does... The, the whole not getting over thing does hold a little bit of merit because he wasn't featured on... Well, was he? To be fair, I don't really remember a whole lot that he was doing, if I could be totally honest. Is that just me? Because I know he had the thing with Cody. And then he had the thing with Dante. Do you remember that? Do you remember when he spit in Dante? No, okay. When he spit the mist in Dante Martin's face and then nothing really happened? Do you remember that? And then he did it to Julia Hart. And then, well, no, that was, that was when he left with the whole match with Sting. That was his last match. And he hasn't been back since. And, yeah, then he, then he, um... Then Brody King showed up, and then Buddy Matthews showed up, because that's when his um, non-compete clause was done, and then they made the House of Black, and then they looked really cool, and they were in a bunch of matches and everything, and it was great, and then it kind of fizzled out, because I personally feel like the Julia Hart storyline is kind of what took the, the wind out of the sails a little bit, because it was a storyline that was genuinely interesting, and it took so long for the storyline to get going. I keep saying this every day, but I, I, it's probably one of the, like, it's, it's just one of the worst missed opportunities. No, it's, it's one of, one of the worst missed opportunities that AEW has taken so far in terms of the direction of Aleister Black, and I think that, you have, first of all, you have to consider that Aleister Black maybe just doesn't want to do this or he doesn't want to do that and all that sort of stuff. So you can't sit here and be like, AEW should be doing more of this and more of that. And it's like, okay, but if Aleister Black is like, I don't want to, then you can't necessarily like, because if that was the case, wouldn't he be on TV now? You know what I mean? And then the whole conditional release thing happened and then everybody was like, oh, you know, um, is he staying? Is he going? That sort of deal. And then Buddy Matthews was like, I'm leaving as well. And now we haven't seen hide nor hair of Alistair, of, of, of the, the House of Black as a whole. I think Julia Hart's been on Dark. But now her character is kind of just, you know, when um, Alexa Bliss was with Bray Wyatt and then Bray Wyatt left and Alexa was just left with the spooky gimmick. Like, that's pretty much what's going on right now. So... I don't think it's not, I don't think it's, I think, yes, it's a disappointment, but not in the sense of it being, like, Malachi's fault, or, it's really no one's fault, I mean, if you had to put it on someone, I guess it would have to be AEW, but at the end of the day, honestly, man, I, I think that it really just boils down to, like, what Alistair wants to do with himself, you know, I keep switching back and forth, I, uh, yeah, d listen, I, I, hopefully he comes back, I mean, I'm not saying he has to be with the House of Black. I'm just saying that, I, I don't know, I'd like to see him. And really, I want if, if he wants to wrestle, I want him to wrestle and I want him to be happy. Next, Bray Wyatt has been advertised to appear at WWE Crown Jewel. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. Bray Wyatt has been advertised to appear at Crown Jewel. And that 
is more of a testament to just how over he is as a character. The fact that he doesn't even need a match. He didn't even need to build to anything. All he needed to do was just come back and have an intriguing storyline with a with a with a very intriguing build and then he can show up on crown jewel now i don't know what's going to happen at crown jewel i highly doubt anybody i mean I, it, it would be weird if somebody came out because it would it would be more random if anything it would really like it, it would really have to be like someone very prominent but even then again it would just be so out of the blue it wouldn't make any sense you know but I, I don't know. The only other thing that I can speculate is an Uncle Howdy appearance. That's the only thing I can understand is that he's going to Uncle Howdy's going to show up. And I think that Uncle Howdy is going to be Bo Dallas. Now, I don't actually know. I don't know. But if you're advertising Bray Wyatt to be on Crown Jewel and all he's going to do is come out and talk a little bit and then they're going to play a spooky promo on the Titan Tron and then that's it, then he didn't need to be at Crown Jewel. He just needed to be on Raw or something. He could have done that anywhere. He didn't need to be on a pay-per-view for that. You know what I mean? So, I feel like at the end of the day, that means that something's got to be going on, right? We're going to get... I don't know if we're going to get an impromptu match. I don't know if Bray Wyatt's going to like... Maybe Bray Wyatt is going to turn into that upside-down moth thing. He's going to grow wings and he's going to start fluttering around and he's going to, what if he, <laughs> what if he just grew wings and just picked someone up from the crowd and just left? If that happened, I would genuinely be like, well, there we go. I, I, I wanted something to happen and something happened. So there we go. But we're going to have to wait and see what, what happens. Next, AEW, well, finally, I should say, AEW and FTR are called out for carrying around a bunch of belts that don't mean anything. That's right, boys, we're going back to the Jim Cornette experience. Jim Cornette blasted AEW for derailing FTR. Cornette also said all the other tag belts that FTR are carrying around mean absolutely nothing. Not only were FTR derailed, the plan dropping of the AEW tag team titles to them was... Oh, okay. See, okay, not only were FTR derailed, the plan dropping of the AEW tag team titles to them was canceled in favor of the young books being able to play without the parents around ftr has been diminished they still hold every other tag title in the world but of course that doesn't mean anything here in the united states of america it means nothing that they're carrying around the ring of honor belts or the triple a belts or the goddamn new japan belts unless they have the real belts the aw belts that are the primary tag team title for this company in this program that would have made the other three mean uh mean something in addition so he does actually have a point I agree with him. I agree with him. Now, I can hear you getting the pitchforks off the off the wall and um, um, dousing your torches and all that sort of stuff, but I don't care. He is absolutely right. FDR have done absolutely jack uh, uh, bull. I don't know. Okay? They haven't done anything. They haven't been in any programs. They haven't been... They've been barely featured in any matches. He's right. They're carrying... I didn't even know they were carrying around the IWGP tag titles. I didn't even know that they were doing that. I thought they were carrying around the Ring of Honor and AAA titles. I didn't know they were carrying around the IWGP titles. So, he's right. If no one... Listen to me right now. If no one is contesting them, right? If they are not defending the belts, the belts don't mean anything. And on top of that, if they're not in matches, now the belts mean twice as less as they did before. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you give them all these belts? But first of all, no one is even talking about them. No one is like, hey, FTR, you've got the Ring of Honor Tag Team title championships. Me and insert tag team partner here would like to challenge you for those tag team championships. I mean, you literally had Kazuchika Okada show up for no reason, if I remember correctly. Nothing really came of that, you know? So... If you're gonna have, if you're gonna showcase a bunch of different IWGP wrestlers or or NJP IWGP, if you're gonna show a bunch of NJPW wrestlers, then by all means have them show up and be like, hey FTR, I challenge me and my inside tag team partner here want to challenge you for the IWGP tag team championships. But so far nothing's come of that. No one's done anything. FTR haven't been in any matches. They're still over. They're still white hot. But they're white hot like Rusev was white hot they're white hot like like who's white hot the point is they're hot because people want to see them wrestle but for some strange reason now I do remember that 
I do remember that. Every single person in the entire universe wanted the Young Bucks versus FTR for the AEW Tag Team Championship. I think it was like the third one. They wanted the third match between FTR. I think. I don't remember fully. But I do remember that that was the thing. And, and, if I remember correctly, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I do remember that at some point there were talks of the match taking place and then it got canceled. Now, Jim Cornette's saying that they got canceled because the Young Bucks wanted to play around when, you know, the adults weren't around. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know if that's true or not. But I swear I did genuinely hear that FCR were going to be in the tag team title picture, and then they got taken out. I, I but I don't actually know what happened. So he does have a point. I don't really understand why they're holding all these belts if nothing is really happening with them. You know what I mean? So I think at the end of the day, I think if you're Tony Khan or anyone who is in charge of creative, I think. Now is uh, as good a time as any to start building them up and start actually having somebody, uh, you know, go after their titles. Because otherwise, they're just carrying around pieces of metal that don't do anything. That's pretty much it. Because what's the point of walking around with the titles and going, we're the champions, we're the champions. Okay, well, when was your last match? And you can't recall. It doesn't really make any sense. What are we talking about? Jim Cornette yelled at Malachi Black because his AEW run was a disappointment. I don't think it was that bad. I think his presentation was fantastic. He's an incredible in-ring competitor, and he's fantastic on the mic. But that doesn't have anything to do with it because it has to do with how AEW treated him. And AEW didn't treat him too bad. I just think it was a mix of AEW not necessarily showcasing him and also him kind of having conf conflicts about wanting to wrestle and also being on camera at the same time. Bray Wyatt's going to show up at Crown Jewel. I don't know what he's going to do. I assume it's going to have something to do with Uncle Howdy. Hopefully there's a match or something because otherwise, what's the point of him showing up? And FCR and... FCR and AEW as a whole are in trouble by Jim Cornette, which you don't want to be because they haven't really been featured on the show and they're carrying around a bunch of belts that don't mean anything, which is true because if you're not defending them, two, okay, two things. On one end of the spectrum, if you're not defending them, they don't mean anything. But on the other end of the spectrum, if you're defending them too, no, if you're defending them too much or they're hopping between too many different people all at one time, that also means they don't mean a lot because they're just getting hopped around and there's no importance to it, you know? So at the end of the day, folks, I just hope that FTR gets shown on TV more and hopefully they'll be in a Ring of Honor tag title match or an IWGP tag title match. We'll have to wait and see. That's going to do it for this episode. I'm going to give a shout out to everyone who stopped by. Hopefully everybody has a wonderful tonight and a wonderful tomorrow. And as always, big hugs. Big hugs all around.